Hi, I'm Mark Lieberman with Nostalgic Motoring in Auburn Hills, Michigan, and today I'm here to tell you about this 1938 Packard convertible sedan. These are amazing automobiles and built in a very interesting time. Well, the 38 Packard here is the 17th series of Packard, and it had some very special attributes at the time. This is a 12-cylinder car, and it catered to the most uh, opulent buyers in the market at the time. Competition was Cadillac, um, Chrysler Imperial. Uh, Duesenberg was yet a ways off for them because that was uh, the top of the food chain at that point in time. Uh, but these, again, served a regal community of uh, automotive customers that were interested in style, luxury, performance, and moreover, making a statement. And that's exactly what this car would do. Uh, we talked a little bit, I mentioned uh, the 12-cylinder uh, engine. Very special engine in these cars. So this is 170 horsepower. Uh, it had uh, an engine that uh, uh, was roughly, let's see, it was 434 cubic inches. And uh, um, it powered this automobile at really strong speeds, but moreover did it in such a smooth manner. I could only equate it to electric automobiles of today because they are that smooth. You can fire this car up and you can balance a nickel on its side on the intake manifold. Really, really cool engineering, very smooth. In fact, you can idle these 12 cylinder engines down so slowly that you can actually count the fan blades as they spin by. Idle it down to about 100 RPMs. Amazing. Uh, so, so anyway, I mentioned that, that, that it's a smooth, opulent vehicle, but the real joy on, the, on that side of the engineering and design is on the interior. Let's have a look. So inside this automobile, you see some, some really cool features. Uh, begin with this giant banjo-style steering wheel in front of you. Um, with a smooth plastic case on the outside and then the, the stylish three-spoke design uh, on the inside uh, bearing the Packard crest in the center of the, uh, the horn button. The dashboard, in this instance, it is painted wood grain on metal. Um, although it's done so well, even with the actual wood next to the uh, wood grain that's painted, you can't tell the difference. It's, it's quite beautifully done. This array of chrome instruments in front of you uh, tell you all that you need to know about what's going on uh, with both uh, your speed and what's happening with the engine. You have, of course, oil pressure, uh, temperature, and uh, charge amps. Uh, but moreover, you've got uh, something that was interesting at the time. You've got a, a radio integrated into the dash, and the, uh, the dial face on the radio is pretty much identical to the speedometer, all in the same font uh, with a very similar needle. Um, and so you have to look twice to say, am I looking at the, the radio dial or am I looking at the speedometer? Um, the clock is done in the same fashion, and all of them, again, integrated in these beautiful five dials in front of you. Um, uh, a very pleasing look. Two glove boxes, one on either side. And then, of course, you've got your, your controls, your pedals on the floor, and your floor shift. Uh, this is a three-speed manual transmission, which was quite common at the time. And it would still, based on the, the gearing that it would give you, it would still propel you down the road at uh, uh, some, some very spirited speed. Uh, so, so this was capable of both uh, touring as well as uh, uh, neighborhood drives and, uh, uh, and enjoying the way uh, no matter where you were, no matter where you were headed. Um, in addition to this, we've got a very opulent uh, layout in the back. One more thing I'd like to point out before we go back there are the seats and the door panels. All leather, all hand sewn, of course. Um, but moreover, little details became super important here. You have these oval-shaped buttons, um, not something that was produced uh, on a mass level by uh, the typical trim manufacturers. These were done special at the time. Uh, and when this car was restored, um, they actually had to make tooling in order to recreate these buttons because it was not something that could be, could be purchased. Uh, the door handles for uh, uh, the window cranks and opening the doors, uh, they have these, these nice accents and these uh, uh, design characteristic lines in them. 
Uh, again, no detail was spared when they were building these automobiles. Uh, they wanted uh, the driver and its occupants uh, to feel very special. Let's have a look in the back. Continuing in the theme of luxury and comfort, we have the back seating area. Ample leg room, a footrest of course, where would you be without a footrest? Um, a compartment here would of course, that would open up, and this would typically have a bar set in it. So you could have decanters, flasks, uh, possibly cigar cases, cigarette cases, um, other items of comfort and stature at the time. Of course, the Packard crest emblazoned in the, in the back portion of the seat. And then uh, as, as you continue the theme from the front, you have wood grain on both side panels above the door. And uh, as you look upward, we have wooden bows that uh, support the top along with chrome um, uh, rails in order to button everything together. And when you're sitting back here looking forward, uh, it gives you a, a very regal feel about uh, the entire presence of the automobile. Uh, you're surrounded with great materials, comfortable leather. Uh, these automobiles are silent as they whisk down the road and really quite comfortable. And by 1938, these cars also possessed some uh, more innovative operational features. Now these cars had hydraulic brakes, drum of course at the time, but nevertheless, uh, much more stable than their previous uh, mechanical brakes that they were using. Um, their transmissions were smooth and more refined. Now they've gone to independent suspension in the front, so the ride was smoother. Um, it was really a, a much more refined automobile than, than it was in even the early 30s. So this car was developing into something very special and very sought after. You were somebody when you arrived in your Packard. So as we move towards the rear of the car, we notice this incredible line with this convertible top. Now take a look at how long this top is. It's huge. And folding this back into the uh, secured area is definitely a job for two people. But once it's tucked in there, it's done so in such an elegant manner with the boot on it and all, it, it's really astonishing how much real estate you're able to tuck away in this. It's very cool. On the back here of the car, we have the trunk rack. Yes, at this stage, we were now transitioning from an actual physical trunk to an integrated trunk. And in this particular instance, we had both. So the original trunk rack would be here, and you'd set that trunk on top. And now we've got an integrated trunk as well that has a spot for the spare tire and various other things that you may find important at the time. Now, here's a quiz for you. When you're going to replace all the tires on this car, how many tires do you actually replace? Seven. You've got four tires on the car. You've got two side mounts up front, one on each fender, and another one back here. It's a lot of tires to replace. The interior of the trunk, as you see, is trimmed in both carpet and leather. And uh, you have, you know, once again, the continued refinement of presentation of the overall car. It's a beautiful automobile, an amazing experience to drive, and I strongly recommend that you take a Packard for a drive yourself. Packards are what sold me on pre-war cars and falling in love with these. It became really my favorite pre-war car to drive. There's nothing better than a Packard 12. Get out and enjoy one. Thanks for joining us.